Welcome back to the channel. This is the Earth Science Classroom. This video is looking at the Grand Canyon and it's part of the Colorado Plateau series. So in this video, we're looking at missing time and how the Grand Canyon is a great example and a perfect location to look at different kinds of unconformities and discuss where all this missing time has gone. This is the Earth Science Classroom. To appreciate the unconformities of the Grand Canyon, and especially the Great Unconformity, is two factors that happened over a long period of geologic time. The first was the tectonic uplift of the entire Colorado Plateau to a higher elevation, and the second is the Colorado River that's flown from the Rockies down in elevation and flowed over this newly uplifted Colorado Plateau and started to make its way down through the plateau and that meant eroding and transporting all of this newly uplifted sedimentary rock over the course of five million years. And this five million years, which seems like a long time, has eroded and created this beautiful canyon, which is in some parts one mile deep, and has exposed over 1.6 billion years of rock. So from the surface of the plateau and the rim of the canyon, you're looking at the Kaibab formation being around 260 million years old as the surface. And as it goes down deeper into the canyon, into the inner gorge, you're getting rocks that are over 1.8 billion years, which is called the basement Vishnu rocks or the basement rocks. And these amazing unconformities would not be visible to geologists were it not been from the river eroding and sculpting the canyon as it has done over the last five million years. A quick recap on what an unconformity is and the types. So an unconformity is a period of time on the Earth's surface where there is zero or very small amounts of deposition whereby erosion and weathering are paramount and sculpt the landscape through erosional and weathering agents. Then we have the types of unconformity. So it's basically where the weather and erosion occurred and on what kind of rock and what rock is then laid above or deposited above this unconformity. Are they sedimentary rocks, igneous rocks, or metamorphic? And the combinations create different kinds of unconformities. So the first one is the classic one that Hutton saw in Sicker Point in Scotland was the angular unconformity where you have these tilted rocks and then above the tilted rocks, you have a horizontal rock. And you can see that there is a difference between the angular rocks below and the horizontal strata above. Then we have a disconformity. A disconformity is an unconformity, a period of missing time of erosion, of lack of deposition between two sedimentary rock layers above and below. Then a nonconformity is where you have a difference in rock type. So you have an igneous or metamorphic type below and a sedimentary rock above. And in between you have an unconformity, a period of time of weather and erosion and non-deposition. Then you have a para conformity, which is not as common, which is the same as a disconformity, but there is limited or no evidence of erosion between the two rock strata, making it very difficult to establish that there is an unconformity because you can't see the uneven erosional surface of which the top layer is deposited. The Grand Canyon has four sections or four areas where there are unconformities. So there's four of them and they range between disconformity, angular and nonconformity. So there's all different types of unconformities in the Grand Canyon, which is exposed thanks to the river. Now, there are two within the Paleozoic rock strata, the canyon wall within the cemetery rocks, and these are both disconformities. There's the first one between the Supai group and the Red Wall formation, which is a smaller disconformity in terms of the length of time that was covered by weather and erosion, which is around 20 million years. The base of the Supai group cemetery rock layers dates around 320 million years ago, and the top of the 
red wall formation is around 340 million years. So it's around 20 million years of erosion and weathering at that location. Then we have just below that another disconformity between the red wall formation and the Tonto group. The Tonto group is a thicker layer of sedimentary rocks and strata and the red wall limestone again is about 340 million years old and the top layer of this Tonto group is called the Moave limestone. So there is a range of age for this Moave limestone but it's around 500 million years old. So that means there is a hundred and fifty to 160 million year disconformity between the red wall and the Tonto group showing a long expanse of weathering and erosion. Now, what could be causing this? Well, there is a distinct link between deposition of sediments and class through fluvial and water environments. So if you have any kind of sedimentary rock, especially you're gonna have some sort of water around to form the rocks with its large rivers, lakes, or most likely oceans or inland seas. In this case with Colorado, with Grand Canyon, it was inland seas. So if you don't have deposition, you have an unconformity, like we have here with the two disconformities, you have a period in Earth's history, which we can date back, where the Grand Canyon, this location on the Colorado Plateau was not under or around water so there was no deposition so it was a period where the either the sea level dropped or there was uplift to create this lack of deposition and increased weather and erosion so then we get the two bottom unconformities towards the grand canyon supergroup and the basement rocks now the first one is the angular unconformity which is between the grand canyon supergroup which is the angled tilted sedimentary rocks that are between 740 million years and 1.2 billion years old at the base and the separation between the supergroup and the tonto group above so you've got the difference between the precambrian rocks and then you get the paleozoic rocks so this boundary is the angular unconformity and it can range between 200 to 210 million years of unconformity or missing time now there's a second non-conformity which is between the basement crystalline rocks, the igneous metamorphic suite, and the Grand Canyon supergroup. Now this unconformity is a non-conformity, so you have the igneous metamorphic rocks below, and above it are the tilted sedimentary rocks of the supergroup. Now this unconformity, this non-conformity, is around 500 million years because the basement rocks are around 1.7 billion and the supergroup, the oldest, is around 1.2. So there's a 500 million year gap of missing time at this non-conformity. Then, last but not least, we have the, what's called the Great Unconformity. And this is an unconformity which is seen all around the world in different locations and it's a period of missing time, a time of weather and erosion that has occurred around the entire planet at a certain point in geologic history. And with the Grand Canyon, you could see this great unconformity between the rock layers, which is fantastic to study. So it's between the basement rocks that are around 1.7 billion years old, the igneous and metamorphic suite, and the Tonto group, which is Paleozoic. So it goes as old as 541 million years. So between 1.7 billion and 541, you've got a missing time amount of 1.2 billion years, which is absolutely incredible. And these unconformities are all in the Grand Canyon and are able to be studied and researched through the exposure of these rocks thanks to the Colorado River. The Grand Canyon is a spectacular location for geologists to not only look at and study the rock formations, the ages, the index fossils, the environments these rocks formed in, but also to study the missing time, the great unconformity, the angular and dis and non-conformities that the Grand Canyon has along its walls and between its rock layers. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and maybe hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.